There are so many advances in the diagnosis and treatment of prostate cancer, and today I'm at the uh, Point Counterpoint Perspectives in Urology Annual Meeting here in San Diego. I'm very excited to speak with Dr. Philip Ku, who's actually a neighbor of, our, of ours in uh, Sunrise Urology in Gilbert, Arizona, and also Beth, who is also, who's a nuclear pharmacist. pharmacist. I mean, just, she gave me a name of, of her title, which is just amazing. And, uh, radio ligand specialist. Radio ligand specialist. So if you, ha if you haven't heard about this, the radio ligand specialist, this is the next thing that is going to be happening in the diagnosis, identification of, of cancer and also treatment of cancer. Imagining uh, a, a, a better way and a different way to find cancer sooner, small cancers if they come back, and uh, also attaching something to uh, 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 attaching a treatment to a, a little uh, molecule that can then target the cancer. And Dr. Ku is about to uh, give a presentation, so I figured I'd grab you real quick and have you discuss the basics of, of this type of technology and what it's called. Sure. So PSMA targeted um, there, there, there are two components. There's a diagnostic component and there's a therapeutic component. So PSMA is stands for prostate-specific membrane antigen. It is overexpressed in prostate cancer cells. So then if you could actually target that receptor with a isotope that is diagnostic, that gives, gives off a positron, you can then image it using PET-CT. So that's one piece. So then if you could image it, then you could use it in various disease states to better diagnose primarily metastatic disease. And then, to take it a step further, the reason why there's a lot of uh, discussion about Theranostics is then instead of having a diagnostic radioisotope, you put on a therapeutic radioisotope, which then can target the same protein with something that'll kill the cell. So you could use a beta emitter. In the future, we'll be using alpha emitters to, to target the prostate cancer itself. So basically, you're finding the prostate cancer cells uh, that are over-proliferating PSMA and then attach something that will kill the cells. You know, I'm putting it very simplistically sure. because the audience is quite broad. And, and then so you can not only see the cancer, maybe better sooner, now you can attach something that will kill the cancer specific to that type of cancer. Absolutely. And I think the diagnostic potential extends even beyond just the theranostic. So we will be seeing the use of these diagnostic technologies to diagnose disease before definitive therapy, and that'll alter your treatment plans, and after recurrence. And that might change how you do your radiation planning, uh, how you might manage your patients differently, because many of these patients will be diagnosed as metastatic sooner than what we've seen in the past. And uh, we were chatting before this uh, camera turned on, uh, Beth, that uh, when you can see something sooner, maybe you can, you can treat it and you, have op you open up other options. Absolutely, and that's the hope with our agent. Um, I work for Lantheus Medical Imaging, and we have an F18-based PSMA imaging agent. F18 is the diagnostic radioisotope that Dr. Ku just mentioned that allows us to take a picture so that a nuclear medicine physician can see the amount of disease and then collaborate with the clinical management team in order to select the appropriate course of action. That, what is the name of this this agent? It's known as Polarify is the brand name. Um, it is also colloquially known as DCF PYL. So much of the research that you find is under that name. And then if you're um, intrepid enough to pronounce the generic name, it's Pithlufolistat. Um, but Polarify was approved just before uh, Memorial Day in 2021, and it is available for distribution to the imaging centers in your area. So that's very exciting. I understand you, you already use this type of uh, imaging uh, modality. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the utilization rates across the country are growing rapidly uh, because there's been a huge need for better imaging. I think we all recognize the limitations when it comes to conventional imaging. Bone scans and TC, CT scans have served us well, but it really detects recurrent disease really late, and that doesn't really work for patient care. A patient with biochemical recurrence, you need to be able to find that metastatic disease, that oligometastatic disease sooner because the hope and belief is if we could treat sooner, we could actually have a greater lasting impact. And uh, Beth, we were talking earlier that uh, you may be able to see no, you may see no change in PSA and yet 
there, the, the marker may show something. You know, that's up to the clinical um, decision maker. Um, they may decide to order the imaging based upon what they're seeing in the patient that they're um, deciding to do the scan on. Um, so there is an opportunity for imaging these patients based upon patient selection for initial staging prior to definitive therapy, or as Dr. Ku said, um, when there's suspicion of recurrence. Yeah, and, and often we base that on PSA and hopefully not based on clinical uh, presentation of the patient because that would be really bad. Correct. You know, if we wait for the clinical presentation of recurrent disease, oftentimes it'll be too late. Uh, I think the real hope is in patients at biochemical recurrence, if we could diagnose the oligometastatic disease much sooner and treat that, maybe there's a potential for cure there. Uh, and that's sort of the great, great hope. And it, it, it also, before definitive therapy, if we could identify the meds, you know, we're hoping that there'd be better outcomes there as well. Really, that's awesome. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Beth and uh, Dr. Ku, for the uh, discussion. And I look forward to uh, your presentation in a few minutes. My pleasure. All right, thanks.